The road map of my talk will be uh, some part of chronic inflammatory arthritis. I will be touching upon rheumatoid arthritis and osteoarthritis, the disease burden, the pathophysiology of the disease, the current treatment options and their limitations, as well as the role of a novel anti-inflammatory agent. Now, we all know rheumatoid arthritis is a systemic disorder characterized by a chronic inflammatory polyarthritis of unknown etiology. It uh, basically it involves inflammation, which can also involve the skin, eyes, lungs, and blood vessels. It has an undulating and fluctuating clinical course, which has a highly unpredictable prognosis. It is associated with about 60% increase in the risk of cardiovascular disease-related deaths. And definitely, it's a complex and multifactorial uh, disease. Now, coming to the pathophysiology, which I would say highlight all the medicine guys who are there, they would know better. Now, there is basically the activation of the macrophages by the antigen-presenting cells, that is the T cells. Now, these, uh, once they are activated, they produce inflammatory cytokines, and that is basically the tumor necrosis factor alpha and interleukin-1. Now, these two inflammatory cytokines are responsible for most of the havoc which is caused by rheumatoid arthritis and uh, that is basically synovitis. It produces a lot of uh, collagenases, leads to destruction of the extracellular matrix and it re uh, there is also release of the matrix metalloproteinases which leads to cartilage degradation. And uh, coming to the osteoarthritis, initially it was thought that there was no inflammatory process. But actually, if you see, uh, the definitely there are in inflammatory, that cytokines are involved, tumor necrosis factor alpha and interleukin-1. They are the major cytokines which are involved in the pathogenesis of osteoarthritis. And apart from that, elevated levels of interleukin-6, interleukin-17, matrix metalloproteinases have also been implicated in osteoarthritis. And this leads basically to synovitis and articular cartilage damage. So now the concept is changing that now it has been uh, stated that osteoarthritis is indeed an inflammatory arthritis. Now, now coming to the pathophysiology, the tumor necrosis factor and interleukin-1, they are considered the major inflammatory cytokines which are involved in rheumatoid arthritis as well as osteoarthritis. And there is release of these inflammatory cytokines which is actually regulated by uh, nuclear factor kappa B. And it is a transcription factor which is present in all the cells and plays an essential role in inflammatory and immune responses. Now, it acts as a master switch to turn inflammation on and off in the body. And the disorders which are associated with this activation of nuclear factor uh, kappa B are rheumatoid arthritis, osteoarthritis, ankylosing spondylitis, psoriatic arthropathy and juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. So it is considered as the master switch of inflammation. Okay, so what happens actually is the activation of the nuclear factor kappa B that leads to that, that inflammatory stimuli that leads to the release of tumor necrosis factor alpha and interleukin-1. Now, they basically, um, they enter the cell and activate the nuclear factor kappa B. So, once this is activated, it translocates inside the nucleus. And then it activates the genetic encoding um, genes, basically encoding the inflammatory mediators. And this indirectly will lead to release of the inflammatory mediators which are basically the pro-inflammatory cytokines. And this is the outcome of the nuclear factor kappa B activation. And basically, as you can see, that the inducible enzymes and the pro-inflammatory cytokines, they will indirectly act on all the synovial membrane, causing the inflammation, proliferation of the synovites, which is known as the panus formation. It acts on the chondrocytes, leading to increased activity of COX-2 and the ma matrix metalloproteinases that leads to cartilage destruction and also it acts on the bone leading to osteoclastogenesis and bone erosion. So the nuclear factor kappa B, it plays a very crucial role in the inflammatory as well as immune responses through the regulation of the genes encoding the pro-inflammatory cytokines and the inducible enzymes. Now this is how inside, when we are surgeons, we look into the joints, we see 
lot of destruction inside the joint. Now, if you see on the left hand side, the initial how uh, the cartilage looks initially and in the initial stages of the disease and later on the right hand side, if you see that the total destruction of the joint is there in a florid um, the synovitis al along with the cartilage damage as you can see in uh, late uh, stages of rheumatoid arthritis. Now coming to an innovative option in the management of arthritis, the, there is a thing which is coming that is nuclear factor kappa B inhibitor. Now there is a lot of talk about this new drug that is curcumin but actually we, we all know about this curcumin. We all know about haldi and that it has our entire Ayurveda is associated with that and we all know the entire Indian history. We have been using this haldi that is curcumin uh, a derivative. Uh, basically uh, in uh, our traditional medicines. Biologically, it is an active phytochemical compound which is obtained from the rhizomes of curcuma longa and it possesses various diverse properties. Not only it is anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, anti-proliferative, it is anti-angiogenic, hypolipemic, neuroprotective, also anti-diabetic. There are a lot of clinical trials going on with more than 1000 patients who have completed these trials. There are still pending ongoing clinical trials which are there. Now curcumin is a nuclear factor kappa B inhibitor. Basically it acts on the master switch of inflammation. And this is, there are multiple sites in which the curcumin can act. As you can see, it prevents the activation of the nuclear factor kappa B by inhibiting the, uh, the kinase, the, uh, that is the uh, IKB kinase, that's the enzyme which is involved in activation of the nuclear factor kappa B and therefore it prevents the translocation of this nuclear factor kappa B into the nucleus and once this translocation is prohibited it thereby prevents the release of inflammatory mediators. So there are a lot of more than 5600 pharmacological studies which have been documented the potential application of this curcumin have been used in rheumatoid conditions, traumatic, sports related injuries, Alzheimer's disease, gastric ulcer, irritable bowel disease and Crohn's syndrome, Crohn's disease. All these have been already tried. So curcumin in rheumatoid, various trials are going on. It's a comparative study of curcumin with uh, diclofenac. Now it shows it provides greater improvement in the disease activity score along with the American College of Rheumatology uh, scores as compared to diclofenac and there it has been seen that there is a significant reduction in the CRP level uh, if a patient is on curcumin and it is effective as well as safe in patients with active rheumatoid arthritis. Now there is a pilot study which is going on 18 patients with rheumatoid arthritis treated with curcumin for two weeks and there was significant improvement in the joint swelling, morning stiffness as well as the walking time. And it was very well tolerated with better GI tolerability. Now uh, the real time experience, real life experience with curcumin monotherapy, 820 osteoarthritic patients attending the OPD clinics were treated with curcumin for 6 months. Now the results as you can see there is significant improvement in the pain, improvement in joint flexibility and a better quality life index. 50% of patients were able to discontinue the use of NSAIDs, concomitant NSAIDs and analgesics. And the curcumin therapy was very well tolerated. Now this, there is also a comparative study with ibuprofen. 367 primary knee osteoarthritic patients with a pain score of more than or equal to 5 were randomized to receive ibuprofen or curcumin for a period of at least 4 weeks. And there was significant decrease in the OMAX score and uh, the pain, stiffness and the functional score from the baseline in both the groups. And curcumin was found to be as effective as ibuprofen. And the lower incidence of GI side effects uh, was involved in curcumin group. Now the role of curcumin as a monotherapy agent, 100 patients with osteoarthritis were treated with curcumin alone for 8 months. And the results, there was significant decrease in the serum inflammatory biomarkers, interleukin 1 beta, interleukin 6, soluble CD40 ligand and the soluble VCAM uh, 1 and ESR. There was more than 50% decrease in the WOMAX score and a three-fold increase in treadmill walking performance. In patients already who are on NSAIDs and analgesics, the co-administration of curcumin was associated with a decreased need for NSAIDs as well as marked reduction in the GI side effects. 
Now combination therapy of curcumin along with diclofenac. 88 patients enrolled for the study, primary knee osteoarthritis. They were randomized to receive diclofenac alone or diclofenac with curcumin. As compared to the diclofenac monotherapy, the combination of curcumin with diclofenac was associated with greater pain relief, better improvement in the knee injury and osteoarthritic outcome score. So if curcumin when combined with NSAIDs, it provides additional benefits. Now the combination therapy was also tried with celecoxib along with prednisolone and it has been seen that it enhances the action of celecoxib on COX-2. It decreases the need of additional celecoxib as well as curcumin uh, along with prednisolone there was additive anti-inflammatory action through the inhibition of inflammatory cytokines with significant reduction in the joint swelling as well as reduction in the side effects which were due to the steroids. Now curcumin when administered with methotrexate uh, as a disease modifying agent synergistic anti-arthritic action was seen and thereby it may help to reduce the dose of methotrexate and it also indirectly reduced the risk of hepatotoxicity and hematological toxicity seen by methotrexate. Now coming to the safety profile, curcumin is generally recognized as safe by the US FDA. No noticeable adverse events were observed with doses up to 8 grams daily for 3 months. And unlike NSAIDs, free from adverse effects on the kidney, liver or cardiovascular system, even after long term use it has been seen. Occasional patients may complain of mild to moderate or transient nausea and diarrhea. Now coming to the introduction of a novel formulation of curcumin. Uh, now as we all know that conventional curcumin has some limitations. It is poorly water soluble. It's a polyphenolic compound. It is actually poorly absorbed from the GI tract. It is undetectable in the plasma and doesn't reach the systemic organs and tissues. So thereby there is a questionable efficacy. The clinical trials which were carried out with the conventional curcumin, they have utilized high doses up to 12 grams per day. But few studies have uh, shown positive results, but overall it had poor GI tolerability. Now coming to a new enhanced form, that is a bio-enhanced curcumin using the self-microemulsifying drug delivery system. That's a new system which has come, it has been developed and it provides basically nano-sized hydrophilic droplets of curcumin with improved bioabsorption and better tissue penetration. So that is where it has developed. So bio-enhanced curcumin, as you can see the human pharmacokinetic studies, as you can see the tea half-life, within about 30 minutes that it uh, reaches the, um, the active plasma levels. And as you can see, a dose which has been al almost about 100 to 200 is very effective and it can be raised to 400 milligrams. So th that's the enhanced uh, um, curcumin. So coming to the dosage, the exact dosage may vary from patient to patient depending upon the disease severity and the degree of inflammation and patient response. But the majority of the patients will respond to about 100 to 200 milligram per day. And if required, one can increase the dose up to 400 milligram per day. Now, to summarize everything, now curcumin inhibits the master switch of inflammation, that is a nuclear factor kappa B, decreases the release of inflammatory prostaglandins and cytokines. The monotherapy is found to be effective and safe in the treatment of osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis. And the efficacy has been seen to be at par with NSAIDs but with better GI tolerability. It can be used along with NSAIDs or steroids to provide additive and synergistic action and that will indirectly help in dose reduction of the steroids and the NSAIDs. It can be used along with methotrexate and help reduce the risk of hepatotoxicity. And unlike biologics, it can be given orally and it is safe and it is well tolerated. Now, an attractive option uh, in rheumatoid arthritis and osteoarthritis, either as a monotherapy or combination therapy. And particularly, it will be a useful option, especially in those group of patients who are intolerant to NSAIDs, steroids or disease-modifying agents, with those patients who have compromised renal function, hepatic dysfunction or cardiovascular disorders like hypertension and congestive heart failure.